What is up guys, it's your boy Sol, I'm here, back with another Wrath of the Lich King classic gold farming video. So today we are back with another dungeon walkthrough in Wrath of the Lich King classic, talking about how you can farm gold inside different dungeons, and today we are covering Uldaman. This is probably, most likely going to be the highest value dungeon you can farm right now in Wrath Classic, both for current value and also future value as well, and the reason why I'm making these videos right here is to show you guys why you can farm gold inside dungeons, as well as how, why it works, and like this is a type of farm you can do right now, make a bunch of gold, and even one month from now, two months from now, a year from now, two years from now, you can still do this farm and it will produce a lot of gold for you. So, today, Ulderman. Technically, you don't need to have any professions for Ulderman, but as you can see right now on my minimap, there is a mining vein right next to me, so having mining will give you some additional steady gold per run from Ulderman, and I would definitely recommend having mining on the character that you are running this with. You can pick up different mining veins, you have both iron and some different type of vein, and also mithril. Mithril will give you a lot of gold between 10 to 20 gold per vein, so if you can find two mithril veins, which is what I usually find on average in my Ulderman runs, that is about 20 gold just from mithril, in like, that's per run, so 20 gold from only mithril, and as you can see right now, eight, uh, roughly 10 gold in the first one and a half minutes, which is pretty good. The second profession that I personally bring is, uh, is skinning, because you, can, you will kill some beasts inside this dungeon that are skinnable. We will get back to that point when we start skinning the mobs, just to talk a little bit more, uh, more about that as well. Now, let's talk about the class. You want to be a class that you can just sustain the damage the mobs deal to you, which isn't really that much, but if you're playing like a cloth class like a mage, you might want to look like uh, look for doing smaller pulls than I'm personally doing, or like a priest or something, but priests can heal themselves and mages have shields, so shouldn't really be a problem, you can do this as pretty much any class, and yeah, just do pulls, uh, <laughs> just pull everything to be honest, and loot it. Now let's talk about why we're doing Ulderman and where the gold is coming from. Before that though, I do want to give a massive shout out to everyone who's picked up my Wrath Classic Gold Guide so far, and if you want to learn even more about gold making, definitely, definitely consider checking out that guide through the link down below, where I talk more about making gold from dungeons, I show you all of my future investments for Wrath for example, we have early access to phase 3 investments as well, and talking more about what to buy and what to sell when to buy those items, when to sell those items, as well as you also get a full-fledged gold guide as well, and you get pri uh, you get access to a private Discord server where we talk even more about gold making, and you get early access to gold making videos. I'm basically trying my best to help you make as much gold as possible in a closed off community. So once again, if that sounds interesting to you, check it out, the link will be down below, and you can even use the code Solheim to get it for half price. Okay, so here we have the first pack of uh, skinnable mobs, I'm going to pull these ones quite far, and to be honest, I don't really follow a specific route when I'm doing this dungeon. I'm just trying to pull everything inside the dungeon, and also scout for mining veins while I'm doing so. Now, this run right here that, I rec that, that I'm recording right now, I actually forgot about one of the mining veins and had to go back, which does take some time. Now, you will notice there's one or two chests inside the dungeons too, now, they will be locked, or one of them will be locked, and one of them will be unlocked. Every now and then, both will be unlocked as well, so you can grab both of them, but definitely worth grabbing. Now, when you're doing Ulderman, you pretty much have two options. You can either just uh, pull all the mobs you want, but then skip the last boss, and instead go out and reset the dungeon. But personally, I prefer doing the entire run, including the last boss, because after the last boss you get to loot the ancient treasure, which gives you straight up raw gold and three random green items that can be worth a lot of gold. Now, a lot of the gold you're looting is going to be coming from transmogable items, which is a feature coming in Cataclysm if or when that comes out. 
Now, here's the thing, even if you personally only want to play Wrath Classic, like let's say, let's say we get Cataclysm and you have no intention of playing Cataclysm, that doesn't really matter because the fact is, some people will play that and some people will buy these items for transmog reasons later down the line and people have already started buying them right now, so the prices have been skyrocketing and they're probably going to go up even more as well, pretty much every single phase in Wrath they're going to go up in value and therefore this exact farm will just be worth more and more gold. Another reason why I personally prefer doing these farms now, like pre-farming the items pretty much, is that you can get a lot of steady gold by farming now and then getting those big transmog items will just give you additional gold on top of what you're already making. Like you can see right now we're getting medium leather, we're getting mithril ores, we're getting a bunch of stuff that is giving me consistent gold from this farm. We're also looting something called an Endurium Mineral Vein right here, but that isn't really worth too much, but once again, Mithril is worth a lot, Medium Leather is worth a lot, Heavy Leather is worth a lot, and also the Mage Weave Cloth that we're getting from farming here is worth a lot, and overall it's giving me about 500 gold in steady value per hour. So we're farming 500 gold per hour, plus we have the chance of getting some super items as well that can drop from Ulderman. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what you're actually farming for when it comes to Ulderman. So first of all, like I just talked about, you have all of the steady gold you're getting from the loot you're getting, so the cloth for example, the skinning, and also the mining, and also if you want to, you can disenchant the boss loot for a lot of gold, and you can disenchant low value greens for enchanting materials as well. You're also running Ulderman for a very specific reason, you can get what is usually referred to as Ulderman Super Items. And those are items just like these ones right, no, not that one, these ones right here, you have Miner's Hat of the Deep, you have Digmaster 5000, and you have the Papal Fez. As you can see, all of, the, all of these ones have a super low drop rate, we're talking 0.01% chance, and to be honest, it's probably going Going to be even lower than that as well and they have a super super low drop rate you will not see them in quite some time unless you're super lucky but that is also why they're selling for a bunch of gold on the auction house like all of these items here are already already selling for thousands of gold right now and will simply keep increasing in price as we get closer to the, to the addition of transmog items because they are so rare when it comes to transmog people want an appearance that other people don't have so having accessibility to rare items is absolutely huge. So these three right here, definitely worth being on the lookout for. You also have these four right here, so the Adventurer's Pith Helmet, the Jin Su Sword, the Jackhammer, and the Pendulum of Doom. All of these items right here, also worth being on the lookout for. And my rule of thumb when doing Ulderman is that if you get a blue BOE from farming the mobs, not the bosses, but the mobs, definitely throw that on the auction house because it's definitely gonna sell for hundreds of gold and if you get any of these four items right here or these three items right here they're, they will probably sell for thousands not just hundreds but thousands so definitely be on the lookout for them and that is why you're farming all the man because of you you have the chance to get these items and if you farm for it now rather than waiting until cataclysm comes out you can get a bunch of steady gold while you're hunting for these super items and then you can use that gold that you're getting from these runs, like the steady gold you're getting. Like right now, I've been here for 10 minutes and we're sitting on 72 gold. So just about 500 gold per hour-ish right now from doing this. Actually a bit less to be honest, but yeah, roughly 700 gold, uh, 500 gold I mean, per hour in steady gold values. While I'm farming for those super items. And I can then use that gold to invest into these items. So if I don't get lucky enough to get one of these to drop, I can buy it on the auction house right now. And resell it later for even more profit if I believe they're going up in price. And if you want to know more about exactly which items I am personally spending my gold on buying, once again check 
check out the gold guide through the link down below. Now running through the dungeon once again, we are just, um, hopefully you've been following through so you can see how I do the dungeon, but if you just want to do it yourself, that's fine too. All you have to do is clear out all the mobs inside the dungeon and move your way towards the last boss. Now because this is a pretty huge dungeon, it's going to be a big run to get all the way back to the entrance, so my recommendation here is to have a friend or alternatively have two accounts, but even if you don't have two accounts, literally you just need to have one friend friend or a guildmate that you can invite for a second, you then invite them to your party and you tell them to reset the, the uh, reset all the instances after you log out. That way you can log out inside the dungeon, they will reset it for you, and you will then be teleported all the way back to the entrance, and that will save you a lot of time, and by doing this you can do 4-5 to five runs of Uldaman every single hour. As you can see right now, I've been here for 10 minutes, almost 11 minutes, and it's going to to be just about a 15 minute run for me personally, but you have to remember I have skinning, and so far this run to demonstrate how long this takes by skinning everything, I have been skinning everything, just to show you how much longer that takes, so if you don't have skinning, you just want to hunt for the super items and loot the mobs and maybe you have mining for example, well you can definitely shave off at least 1 minute, maybe 2 minutes, and do 12 minute runs of Uldaman to minimax your chance at getting those super items. So that way you can do 5 runs every single hour, capping out right there, and yeah, once again, have a friend invite you so you can just reset the dungeon without having to run all the way back, because like I just said, Ulderman is a huge dungeon, so needing to run all the way back will definitely reduce your efficiency by a lot. As you can see, once again, we got a iron deposit here, and so far this dungeon, we have gotten 1 iron deposit and 2 mithril deposits, so a lot of our gold so far has been coming from Mithril. I think so far this run, 19 gold came from Mithril, out of the 83 gold we have so far. You also have to remember, we also have some currently looted, and the boss loot is currently being counted as zero copper. You can see the oil skin leggings in the loot appraiser right now being valued at zero copper, and some of the boss loot is selling for anywhere between 50 silver and 2 gold. I think the average will be 1 gold per boss loot, so that's enough another 5 to 6 gold in raw gold as well per run, so we're sitting at just about 100 to 150. I think you're gonna get like roughly 150 gold every single run, so if you can do 5 runs per hour, that's gonna give you about 750 gold per hour, but just to give you a number that you can probably relate to, the average number should be about 500 gold per hour, especially if you have mining. And then you have those super items on top, so really you are farming this for a decent amount of royal gold per hour, and also having the chance of getting a jackpot item that can be worth anywhere between 500 gold and probably 10,000 gold if you get the right super item. So right now I'm just going to be doing all of these mobs right here, right here, like you want to do these mobs, there's so many here that have a chance of dropping one of those super items, so it's definitely worth going all the way into this room especially, and for some people, like if you don't don't have a friend to reset for you, this might be where you might want to consider running out and resetting, if you don't care about those 3 greens you can get at the end of the boss or the end of the dungeon, because there's a lot of RP happening from now until then. So right now we are sitting on 13 minutes for example, going to the last boss will take us just about 2 minutes from this, uh, this location, so you can make an argument for going out and resetting right here, but personally I would just go to the last boss and get those 3 greens from that ancient treasure, and yeah, it's just a really chill way to farm some gold really, you don't have to think much, you can just pull some mobs, get some gold, and you get both steady gold from running dungeon, and also you have the chance of getting those super items, which is what I personally really enjoy doing. I can just log on to Wrath Classic, hop inside a dungeon or two, and just, um, well, farm. <laughs> it's a really mindless farm, you don't have to be on the lookout for anything like when you're doing herbalism for example or mining, you constantly have to be looking at your map just to look at when one of those uh, yellow dots show up. For this one you literally just run and you grab some mobs and you do some AoE damage, you loot everything and you hope for some good loot. It doesn't even feel like you're doing a gold farm but at the same time you're farming 
a decent amount of gold I want to say, it's more steady gold than I thought it was going to be, which is pretty good, plus those, like, the Ulderman super items are some of the most expensive in the game. So after you kill this final boss, you will then go right into this room right here, collect the ancient treasure, and as you can see right now in the bottom left corner, you get roughly three random greens from that, and some of them can be worth some gold, like for example right now I picked up some of them, they're on the auction house on my server for 20 gold. That being said, they're being counted in the loot appraiser as 4 and 5 gold so far. So now that we have talked about how to run Ulderman, why you want to do it, and uh, just talking about those super items, I want to leave you guys with some price ranges so you can see exactly how much they are worth, but once again you can definitely just check them out on your server as well, so once again here are the pictures. With the items that I'm personally hunting for, you have the Papal Fest, Digmaster 5000, Miner's Hat of the Deep, and you also have the Adventurer's Pith Helmet, Pendulum of Doom, the Jackhammer, and Jinsu Sword. That being said, let's take a look at and see if any of them are currently on my auction now. So we have the Jinsu Sword, for example. That one is selling for 2000 gold. And you can even see the region market value average is sitting on 1.5k, so definitely pretty good right here. And you can see personally, I have bought three of them for 500 gold each on the average price, and they have gone up 61% in price in uh, like lately. So they are on a really fast uh, uprising in price. They are going up very fast, and I can see them going for way more than 2k as well. Eventually, we also have the Adventurous Pith Helmet, for example. Let me see if we have, uh, yeah, nothing for that one. So if you get that one, you're super lucky and can probably sell it for a lot of gold. And a Digmaster, nothing for that one either. We have the Miner's Hat of the Deep. Miner's Hat. This one selling for twenty thousand. So that is a lot of gold, but this is one of the really, really super items, and you can see even though it's selling for twenty thousand gold, you might think that's a lot of gold. But the market value has gone up 98% recently, and the region market value average is sitting on 14,000. So people are buying it for this amount, and I really wish I had one. I'm not gonna buy it for 20,000 though, but I really, really do wish I had one. And this is what it looks like, by the way. A super, super unique looking transmog item. It's gonna take some time to sell, so if you do get it, don't expect to get 20,000 gold the next day. It has a super low sell rate you can see right here 0 0.006 but once again as we get closer to cathode the sell rate will go up as well but 20,000 gold that is a lot of gold for that one what about the papal fest let me see that one okay nothing for papal fest a uh, pendulum of doom pendulum of doom 40,000 gold so this is exactly why you want to do these farms, they're selling for a bunch of gold, and you're getting a steady amount of, like, steady gold per hour, and you have the chance of getting these big boys. Pendulum of Doom, uh, did I search up the jackhammer? Let me see, just in case. Uh, jackhammer as well, 7.7k. A lot of items right here, definitely worth farming for, and those super items are super expensive. I do hope you enjoyed this video though, I hope it gave you some alternatives to farming gold in Wrath. If you enjoyed the video, leave a, com uh, leave a like down below and let me know in the comment section which other dungeons you want, me you want me to cover next. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more of it, make sure to subscribe as well. Okay, that's pretty much it, it's been a long video. If you made it till the end, please let me know in the comment section, I'll give you a heart. As always, thank Thank you so much for watching, listening, and I'll see you again very soon.